And I want to give you four main things that I see that encounter with the Lord produces out of these stories that we read from the Bible. Encounter number one produces repentance. When Job encountered God, when Job encountered God, in Job chapter 45, uh, sorry, Job chapter 42, verses 5 through 6 is this, NLT. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Encounters with the Lord will produce genuine repentance, will produce godly sorrows. We can feel sorry for what we've done, and it starts there. But encounter with the Lord produces more than just feeling sorry, but it produces godly sorrow. It produces true and genuine repentance. That's why some of you, a lot of you, could recall your first encounter with the Lord when the Lord truly encountered you, when He truly saved you, when you became born again. And if you go back to that encounter with the Lord, encounter of Him as the Lord of your life, Many of you can go back there and recall the true and genuine repentance that you experienced. Some of you had this process where maybe you grew up in church and you knew from good, the, the difference between good and the bad. And when you did the bad, you know, your consciousness condemned you and you felt sorry. And we, we called it repentance, but repentance is changed life. It's, it's turnaround from 180. And um, we felt sorry, but then we did it again. And then we felt sorry when we came back and asked God for forgiveness. But feeling sorry is not repentance. Repentance, it's, it's not just, uh, it's an action. It's a, change, it's a change mindset. It's a change direction. You're going this way, now you're going that way. It's a 180 degree turnaround. But when you had an encounter with the Lord, some of you said, yeah, I've been in church. You know, I grew up in church. I... I knew about God, but then at the camp, at the church, at the conference, at your own private time with the Lord, you've encountered the Lord and that produced a repentance, a true repentance. You truly saw how despicable and miserable you are without the Lord. You truly saw how your sin hurts the Lord. You truly saw the true nature of your rebellion in you and you wept and you cried that it produced a godly sorrow within you and you came before the Lord and you genuinely repented and that repentance brought forth fruit which was changed life, changed mindset, changed direction in life. Some of you honestly don't know what I'm talking about. That when you truly encounter the Lord, you will have this genuine repentance. You will have this genuine repentance. It will produce that godless sorrow. Number two, number two, <clears throat> encounters with God produces holiness. Encounters with God produces holiness. Let's go back to Isaiah. Let's see his encounter. Okay, as we read in the year of the. In the year of the king, Uzziah, uh, the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up and the train of his rope filled the temple above. It stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and two he flew. And one cried to another said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of the host. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, listen to this, true repentance, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. The realization, the repentance that we were talking about. <clears throat> and I dwell in the midst of people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hands a live coal, 
which he had taken with the tons from the altar. And then he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sins are purged. Encounters with the Lord produce holiness. You can't be holy apart from God. <clears throat> you can't live in holiness and understand what truly what holiness is unless you had an encounter with the Lord. Encounter with the Lord, you know, the Bible says, be holy as He is holy. But us on our own, we can't be holy. The encounters with the Lord, the encounter with God produces holiness, produces lifestyle of holiness, produces desires for holiness. Many people struggle to live in holiness. Many people struggle in sin. And uh, we can beat them. We can force them to do a certain things. And it, it will produce a moral person, but it will not produce a holy person. Hmm, this is good. We can force a person to do certain things adhere to certain rules and 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 and, and uh, uh follow certain protocols and do's and don'ts and it will produce a moral person but will never produce a holy person because holiness comes from the lord number three encounter with god produces fear of god exodus 20 we just read uh, earlier, verse 20, and I'm reading uh, ISV. Moses told the people, don't be afraid, for God has come to test you, that you may fear him in order that you don't sin. So listen, what Moses is saying, said all of this, everything that the Lord is doing. He is revealing Himself. He wants to encounter you so that He can test your heart, so that He can reveal yourself to Him, that you may have fear of Him, the fear of God, and so that you don't sin. <clears throat> now, listen. He's not talking about being afraid of God because he literally says few, few words uh, like uh, uh, in the beginning of the sentence, he says, don't be afraid. And then he says, so that you might fear. Obviously, he's not talking here about uh, uh, being afraid because he just said, don't be afraid. But he's talking about the fear of God, which Bible says is the beginning of, of all wisdom. There's two ways Bible tells us that will keep us from sinning against the Lord. David says in his psalm, I hid your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. And we read in this verse, Exodus chapter 20, the encounters with the Lord, deep encounters with the Lord, which um, it would be difficult to have true genuine encounters with the Lord without the scripture, without the word of God. So, I mean, I, I see those things going hand in hand. But what will keep you from sinning is encounters with the Lord. You know, when I was younger <clears throat> in the Lord, um, when I would fall into sin and I'd do something stupid, it actually keep me from going to God. Satan would whisper to me all these things like oh you're not worthy you're not good enough look you messed up again and he would chase me away from the presence of God and I'll fall into that temptation of self-pity party of, of of oh I'm gonna change and I'm gonna do better and then I'm gonna come back to God and 
every time I fell short and I kept falling back and I kept sinning. And then I realized that I can't live a life without sin apart from God. So running from God and giving into this voice of the devil that chased me away from God even after I mess up is the opposite of what I should be doing. I should be on the opposite when I do sin, run into the presence of God. Despite of all that's within me actually doesn't want to do it because I don't feel worthy. I don't feel good. I don't feel like I, I, I measure up. But I need to go into the presence of God. I need to seek the encounter with the Lord. I need to seek the encounter with His Word that I can develop the fear of God in me that will keep me from sinning. Are you with me? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? That's why encounters with the Lord are so vital. They're so important. Because they will develop fear of God in you, which will keep you from sinning and will give you eternal wisdom. When people come to me and say, hey, I have this certain thing, certain habits, certain sin that I can't break uh, through and I can't, you know, I keep repenting and I, you know, I keep coming back. I keep repenting, I keep coming back. When I ask about their prayer life, when I ask about the depth of their prayer life, the consistency of their prayer life, I honestly, I, 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 I see why. And they, because they lack the encounters with the Lord. They lack that. They don't, they don't pursue the person of the Holy of the Holy Spirit. They don't pursue the person of Jesus. They don't pursue a revelation of Him. They don't pursue the intimacy of knowing Him. Because when you do that, when you pursue that, that in return, those encounters will produce fear of God, which will keep you from sinning. And last but not least, <clears throat> encounters with God will produce purpose. We go back to Elijah's story. Elijah's burnt out. Elijah is done with the ministry. He's depressed. He's asking God to kill him. He has a spirit of heaviness all over him. And, you know, honestly, he's done. He's done. And he comes, he encounters the Lord. He gets refreshed. He gets renewed in that stillness of God's voice. And then God gives him purpose. He gives him assignment. He gives him the second wind. He gives him what to live for. He says, verse 15, 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 says, Then the Lord said to him, Go back the same way you came. And travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazel to be the king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grace, grandson of uh, Nimshi, to be the king of Israel. And anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, from the town of Ab Abel Mahalah, to replace you as a prophet. Anyone who escapes Hazel will be killed by Jehu, and anyone, and those that escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. As I preserved 7,000 others in Israel who never bowed down to Baal or kissed, uh, or kissed him. He encounters the Lord, and in that encounter, he receives purpose. He receives the next phase, next thing. What's the other half of his life going to look like and going to consist? It was to appoint a king or well, multiple kings and it's to raise an ex-prophet. Many people, when they encountered the Lord at first, they were burning with the Lord. They had this first love, first zeal for the Lord. They kept running for the Lord. They were evangelizing. They were doing home groups. They were doing this and this and that. And there came a point in their life when they just felt exhausted. They felt maybe under a pressure of life, maybe even under pressure of demonic spirits, Jezebel spirit and, and under other things. They felt kind of beaten by life. They kind of felt like they, they kind of got into this midlife crisis in their walk with God. The vision is not clear. The purpose is not clear. They don't even know what they're doing. They're just existing. And the solution, and, and, you know, they go depressed. No purpose, no meaning in life. 
And I want to tell you, if you find yourself in that category, if you find yourself dry, you find yourself, honestly, what am I living for? You need an encounter with Jesus. You need an encounter with God because in that encounter, you will receive a fresh revelation for life, fresh vision for the other half of your life, for the other part of the season in your life, that you will have purpose for your life. But it happens in the encounters with Jesus. Write purpose in the chat right now. Let's look at an encounter that Isaiah had with the Lord. He had this encounter with the Lord, with the King, with the Lord of hosts. And in Isaiah verse 6 verse 8 says this, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. After Isaiah encountered the Lord, Isaiah says, Lord, here I am at your service. Here I am at full surrender. Here I am, Lord Jesus. Send me wherever you want me to go. Tell me what you want me to tell them. I will. And that happened after the encounter with, 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 with the Lord of hosts, with God himself, with the person of Trinity, with God the Father. Today, I don't know where you fall in these four things. Um, maybe you're struggling with sin in your life. You know, you just can't beat certain things. Your solution is to press into Jesus even more, not draw away from him, not to stand at the edge of the mountain, go into the mountain, encounter him, be like Moses, say, Lord, I want to see your face. I want to know you, God. Be like Job. I have heard about you, but now my eyes have seen you. Get to that place. Be like Saul who is going and says, Who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus. Get a fresh new revelation of who Jesus is, who God is. Be like Paul that makes the purpose and goal of his life to know him and him only. I count all things as garbage to know him. The one who called me be like Elijah who encountered the Lord says Lord what would you have me do and receive purpose I don't know what you're going through what your situation today but I know a solution it's encounter with God himself and God is inviting you to that encounter God is coming to Eden and is saying, Adam, where are you? Will you make room for him? Will you create room in your schedule and your time? God is looking for Adam, but Adam left a place of encounter. Adam left a place where he used to meet God in the, uh, in the cool of the day. Adam, where are you? Holy Spirit is searching today. Holy Spirit is looking today. He wants to give you a fresh new encounter. Some of you might need to take a few days off and just go be with the Lord. Go to some retreat or can't afford a retreat. Home, two, three days. Put away all electronics. Go on sabbatical. And just be with the Lord. Say, Lord, I want a fresh new encounter with the Lord, with you. Some of you need to create a daily schedule. Create room and place for God to encounter you. <clears throat> God is looking for you. He wants to encounter you. Will you let him in?